Hi, my name is Jim Cook and I'm one of the instructors for our eLearn to Sail program. And this module in our Coastal Navigation series is titled Chart Symbols. We're going to start with depths. All depths are relative to datum. Datum is the average low water over 18, a little bit more than 18, 18 and a half years. Now, why 18 and a half years? It seems like a really weird number. The solar year is 18 and a half Earth years long. So in other words, the position of the stars, the sun, the moon, the planets to each other all repeat themselves about once every 18 and a half Earth years. So when we talk about datum, we're talking about the average low water in 18 and a half years. Now there are two datums. The United States has their datum and the rest of the world has their datum. In the rest of the world, they take the lowest water each year for 18 and a half years. So in other words, the rest of the world averages 18 numbers to find datum. The United States takes the daily low water and averages that number over 18 years. So in other words, the United States uses something like 6,000 numbers, whatever 18 times 365 is. The United States uses that series of numbers to come up with datum. And the rest of the world uses just 18 numbers, the lowest water level for each year over 18 years. It doesn't really matter as long as you use the tide tables for whichever system you're using. So if you have American charts, you must use American tide tables. If you're using international charts, then you must use the tide tables for the international system. You do not want to mix them. The American datum is about three and a half feet deeper than the international datum. So here we have a depth of 82 feet. If this was an international chart, that datum would be about 79 feet. We can see here's 88 feet. On the other side over here, we have 103 feet. Here we have 101 feet. Here we have 76, 83. So I'm going to say this line right here is the 90 foot contour. There may be on some charts, and I can't see it on this chart, but there may be somewhere along this line, there may be a 90 printed somewhere along the line, but you usually get it from just straight inspection. You can see right down here, there is a 60 printed on that particular line. So areas that share a common depth are connected with a line. Everything to one side of it is shallower. Everything to the other side is deeper. So again, there are two datums. We'll talk about the differences when we get into tides and currents. We'll spend a lot more time on that. So all soundings of the same depth are joined by depth contour lines. The following will be interpreted in different ways depending on the depth increments of the chart. So remember that we said charts can be either in meters, fathoms, or feet. If you saw this symbol on a chart and it was a metric chart, it would be 6.3 meters. If it was a fathoms chart, it would be six fathoms, three feet. If the chart was in feet, then it would be 6.3 feet. Rocks, pretty interesting topic. Rocks that are less than six feet below datum are a straight cross. Rocks that are a wash at datum have the four dots. And we'll talk about this a little bit more in a second. Rocks that cover and uncover with tidal flow. So in other words, as the tide goes up or the tide goes down, the rocks are either exposed or they're hidden are with an asterisk. But the important thing to note here is you see this line underneath the six? The way I think of this is that this six, this line rather, represents datum. So this particular object is six units above datum. And when I say units, it depends what the chart is. If the chart's a metric chart, it'll be six meters. If the chart is in feet, then it'll be six feet or six fathoms. 
So when you look at it and you see this line, that means that whatever the object is, is above datum. And this 28 means that this particular island is 28 feet above high, high water all the time. And let's take a look at this next graphic. This is from the Canadian chart number one. And you can see here, on the, starting on the left-hand side, we've got a depth of 7.3. This is a metric chart because it's Canadian. So the depth of this water right here is chart datum. So this line going right along here is chart datum. So that is the depth of the water at datum. At this point, this is 7.3 three meters from datum down to the bottom of the ocean. If you had a three meter tide, so if this was three meters from datum to the high tide mark, then the total depth would be 10.3 meters. An island is above high, high water all the time. And notice that it is relative to the high water mark. Anything that covers or uncovers with water is relative to datum. But anything that is above the water all the time is relative to the high water mark. Now, the way to remember this or the way to think about this, if you were sitting here on your little sailboat, would you want to know the clearance to those high voltage lines at high water? Or would you want to know the clearance at low water? Obviously, the answer is high water. And that's why anything that is above high, high water all the time, the height or the distance from the water is given to you relative to the high water mark. So here they say the clearance of these high wires is 92 meters. A rock that is a wash at datum. So if, the, if at datum, the water is just lapping over the top of the rock, then you have the cross with the four dots. If the rock is above datum, then it is shown with the four or with whatever number with the line underneath it. If it's an area, they'll show it this way. If it's an individual rock, they'll show it with an asterisk. Of the things there are you don't really want to mess with, rocks is a big one. Okay, the nature of the seabed. R means that you've got rocks, S is sand, CL is clay, kelp are the little squiggly lines. A wreck is, there's several symbols. If there's some structure showing, you'll get this. Depth unknown is the line with the dashes through it. Direction of the flood current is an arrow with feathers. So the way I remember this is flood with feathers. And an arrow indicating the direction of the ebb current is an arrow with no feathers. So let's see if we can find some of these. Let's take a look in the lower left-hand corner of your chart, the Block Island chart. We're going to go right down here to the area around Block Island. Let's see if you can find some of those items in this area down here. Again, I'll give two, three minutes, and we'll continue on. I'm going to start in the upper left hand corner here at the top of the top symbol. So right here we have a rock that is a wash at datum. You see the four little dots? Right here we have a rock that is less than six feet below datum. And right here we have a rock that covers and uncovers. Now the point here with this covering and uncovers, the scale of the chart is not large enough for them to give you a number. It's just showing the rocks and that they cover and uncover. So down here, same thing. All right, all these rocks in here cover and uncover. So you really, I mean, as you're coming in here, you really don't want to get inside this. What line is this right here? This would be the... Um, Probably this is the 30-foot line right here. I'm guessing at that. I don't see a 30 on it, but I'm thinking that's the 30-foot line. And you see here, these rocks in here, you really, I mean, if you've got a depth sounder on the board of the boat, you've got it turned on. You do not want to be inside the 30. 
here is a wreck. Somebody did get inside the 30. Here is a an area again that covers and covers, but you see how they've drawn a little circle around this? So that means that there's more than just one rock. There's a series of rocks in there that cover and uncover. Here is a rocky bottom. Here is a sand, shale, and gravel bottom. Here is another wreck, and here is a wreck, but they're not too sure where that wreck is. It's position approximate. Now, these symbols are international symbols. So you learn them on this chart, and they're good everywhere you go in the world. Shipping lanes, traffic separation scheme. You can see right here, this is on the chart you're working with. This is the traffic separation scheme. Outbound traffic goes this way. Inbound traffic comes this way. Inbound, outbound, and this is the separation zone. So in other words, as the freighters are coming and going, they stay away from each other by this much. You, sailing along in your little 40-foot sailboat, really not terribly interested in tangling with a 300,000 ton tanker. You're going to come along. You can be sailing anywhere you want. When you get to this spot right here, you want to try and cross as close to 90 degrees as possible. Once you get into this area, you can sail around again, but you get over to here. Again, you want to cross as close to 90 degrees as possible. Think of yourself trying to run across I-70 on a Saturday morning in ski season. You're not going to want to be dawdling around on the pavement. You're going to want to run across the pavement, get into the separation area, hang around in there if you want to catch your breath, and then sprint across the other side. But in the water, when you're out here and sailing, there's nothing you can do about it. These zones exist, and you've got to deal with them. But try and cross them as close to 90 degrees as possible. Granted, on the ocean, there are no little dotted lines and no purple areas saying this is the traffic separation scheme. But you will see the freighters coming, and you will see the freighters going in the opposite direction. If there's more than one freighter, they will be in a line, one behind the other, sticking to this area. They have their GPS turned on, and they will very much be staying in their traffic lanes. That's the end of the chart symbols module.